I want to provide just a little bit of context for this build. First, this is something my sister wanted. She found the design online and sent me a low res image to work from. The dimensions match the space she wants to put it in. But otherwise I'd say this is a pretty enormous hall table. While I'm happy with how it's turned out, it isn't my cup of tea and that's perfectly okay. It's not for me, so it really doesn't matter what I think about it. To me, the design is almost a mix of brutalism, architecture design, minimalist design, and modern furniture design all wrapped up in one. Secondly, today is the 31st of March, 2020. We're not on full lockdown in Australia, but it feels like that's only gonna be a matter of days. Because of that, the video making process has been somewhat truncated. I couldn't get all the details that I wanted in this build, so that my sister could get her whole table a little bit sooner. Finally, there are also free plans available. I also have a detailed write-up over on Instructables if you prefer written version. I'm currently trying to win in one of their woodworking contests. First up is the top, which goes through the standard material preparation process. First, break it down into more manageable lengths of timber at the miter saw, then joint one face and one edge at the jointer. It's brought down from 45mm rough saw to 40mm final dimension at the thicknesser. To get the desired width, I'll need three boards laminated. I'm cutting off about 20mm off each board so that each section is even rather than having two full width boards and one 60mm narrower. I'm using the domino as a biscuit jointer here. The top will come in at about 50 millimeters wider than my thicknesser, so flattening it afterwards is gonna be difficult. Biscuits, dominoes, or even dowels will help reduce any shifting during clamp up. It's not important that the dominoes are glued in. They're not here for strength. Glue can just be rolled over those holes. Plywood coils help distribute pressure and reduce any marring of the top. The top is cut to length after the glue is dried using a track saw. A circular saw with a guide will do a good job too. It's too heavy and large for a regular crosscut sled. All the parts in the base will end up the same width and thickness, 90 by 40 millimeters. Once they're a uniform width and thickness, they can all be cut to length at the table saw. First by squaring one side, flipping and cutting to length. This works well for the shorter foot pieces. For the larger legs and apron pieces, they can be squared at one end, but it's a bit more complicated to cut to length. Using the existing T-Track on my crosscut sled, I made up a very quick plywood L-shaped extension fence. The extension fence lets me clamp a block of wood to act as a stop, so all the parts end up the same length. All parts receive the exact same joinery pattern, two dominoes per side spaced 25 millimeters from the sides. This T gauge makes it very easy to get the line drawn. Again, I'm using dominoes here for expediency so that my sister could get her table before a full lockdown. I haven't forgotten about the joinery series. So far, I have about nine parts of that drafted and they will start coming out next week. While some parts get flipped to receive the second row of mortises, the mortises in the face need to have the fence adjusted.
For sanding, I use the pencil scribble method. Lightly scribble all over the piece with a HB pencil, then when it's all sanded off, you know you've sanded enough and can move on to the next grit. After sanding, a light round over is added to all the pieces. My sister wanted to retain the sharp edge look, but I managed to convince her a round over was a good idea for her toddler. Before the glue up process, the slots are cut in the aprons for Z clips to attach the top. Due to the size and weight of the base, the glue up will be done in three stages, the two leg assemblies then joining them together with the aprons. Dividing it this way makes for a non-complicated glue up, but it may take a little bit of time, so I'm opting to use liquid hide glue. On the end with no glue up, I quickly cut some pieces the same length as the foot to make sure everything is kept square and didn't pull in too much. The second stage glue up goes much the same, though this time with more metal blasting out. Another advantage of hind glue is the way it lubricates the joint. This very tight fitting set of dominoes needs hammering in when it's dried, but with hind glue it is able to be pushed in by hand. Because of the length I had to resort to pipe clamps joined together. With the table upside down on the workbench, screws for the Z clips can be pre-drilled. One more disassembly, then the finish can be applied. For this, I'm trying out Livos's Kunos oil. It gets wiped onto the surface, then five to 10 minutes later, any excess is wiped off. So far, I'm really digging the surface left behind and how easy it is to apply. And a huge thank you to Ali from Livos Australia, who was kind enough to drop off my order over on her way home. My mum is immunocompromised, so we're having to be extra careful during the pandemic, and Ali's generosity helped me keep everybody safe at home.